sponsored by the Commerce Club, Department of Commerce, University of Kerala. In the past two days, we have witnessed commendable analysis on various aspects covering uh, budget 2022-23. And today we are having four groups. Each group is from MCOM Finance and Accounting, MCOM Global Business Operations, MCOM Rural Management, MCOM Blue Economy and Maritime Law respectively from past 2021-23. So without further ado, let us move on with the presentations. Participants, other than the presenters, kindly ensure that your audio is muted and your video is switched off. Each group is allotted a time scale of 25 minutes for the presentation and 10 minutes for the discussion. First, let us invite the sixth group from S1 MCOM Finance and Accounting for making a presentation on industry infrastructure development. The group members are Ms. Hajra H, Ms. Shabana SS, Ms. Rebadi PV, Ms. Hidaya Fatima, and Ms. Neha Ganeshan. Over to the group. A very warm good morning to one all present here. Myself, Hajra, and I, along with my fellow members, will be discussing on the topic Industrial Infrastructure Development and the Budget Analysis 22-23. This year's budget will be discussed on this topic by us. I'll be discussing the topics Investment Management and Telecom. Next slide, please. Whereas Automotive and Banking and Capital Market will be taken over by Revati. And Industrial Products and Mining uh, Consumer Products will be taken over by Hidaya and Oil and Gas and Power Utilities and renewables will be taken by Shapna. It will be concluded by Sneha, who will be taking the topic real estate and technology. Moving on, this year's budget has continued the thrust on infrastructure and there's a sharp increase in allocation for highways, rural roads and transport. In the investment management sector, IFSC KF City fund management, there has been tax exemptions granted to foreign investors who are to appoint a fund manager based in the IFSC KF City to manage their global investments which will help promote India as a global fund manager jurisdiction. In Alternatives Investment Funds Category 1 and 2, located in IFC Gift City, they are to benefit from the safe harbor provided to Indian portfolio companies that will be raising funds from them and it provides investment funds with a level playing field. Alternative Investment Funds, Real Estate Investment Trust, Infrastructure Investment Trust are also provided the bonus stripping provisions. Moving on to the uh, Venture Capitalist and Private Equity Funds, there has been a proposal to set up an expert committee to examine and address regulatory and other challenges faced by them, which are likely to boost the industry. In the National Pension Scheme, it is decided to grant an additional of 4% of salary to state government employees for their employer's contribution towards NPS, which would enhance the social security benefits of the state government employees. However, the private sector must wait further as reduction for them remains unchanged at 10% of salary for their employer's contribution to NPS. Moving on to the next sector, we have telecom. The proposals here have been regarding the spectrums, that is the spectrum auctions, which are to roll out 5G services in by the end of 2025. 5% of allocation has been done by USO, which will be allocated to the uh, annual collections. Contracts for laying optical fibers have been awarded under the Bharatnet project and BCD rates have been lowered to 2.5% from 2nd of February 2022. The impact of these proposals are that the auctions of 5G spectrums are to roll out and will happen in the year fiscal year 2022-23. The rollout across the state will happen so much faster than other previous generation rollouts within complete fiber uh, within the completion of fiber network in all villages by 2025, for which contracts will be awarded on the Bharat Net project. There has been focus on digital education, including digital universities which will further push the need for high-speed broadband. It could be broadened beyond manufacturers, telecommunication service providers, and mobile services to enable affordable broadband and mobile service proliferation in rural and remote areas. The USO has been awarding 5% for the rural industrial rollout. A 5% allocation towards R&D and commercialization of technology could help commercialization of technology in the rural and private networks. Moving on to the next sector, that is the infrastructure. As we all know that this year's budget is a continuation of the previous year's budget, and the broad three stunts we can see is that mobility and logistics, the second one being green energy, and the third one is the implementation and scale. Logistics, as we all know, is about moving a person from place A to B in the least possible time and cost, 
and as we all know, India is historically weak. And logistics uh, is being combined with the Gati Shakti plan. The Gati Shakti combines seven engines and gets a coordinated approach from 16 government ministries in the government of India. For the implementation and scale, we have received four ends from the finance ministry, that is National Infrastructure Pipeline, National Monetization Pipeline, National Bank for Financing Infrastructure Development and National Policy and Program Management Framework. So what to do is answered by NIP and NMP and how to finance is answered by NBFID and NPPMF and the rest is all about how to get it done. The Prime Minister National Plan announced in the Gati Shakti National Master Plan announced with an aim to make logistics connectivity seamless for faster movement and transfer of goods within the year 2022-23. Four multimodal development projects have been have been announced and the budget has planned to expend, increase the capital expenditure outlay by 35.4 percentage expanding the national highways by 15 percentage which will be 25,000 kilometers with an outlay of 20,000 crores. A scheme for expressways will be formulated to facilitate faster movement of people and goods. One product one railway station concept has been introduced to help local business and supply chains. As part of the Atmanirbhar Bharat, Atmanirbhar Bharat 2,000 km of railway network are to be brought under coverage, the indigenous world-class technology and capacity augmentation 22-23. 400 new generation Vande Bharat trains are to be manufactured during the next three years. Similarly, 100 Gati Shakti cargo terminals for multimodal logistics are to be developed during the next three years. National Ropeway Development Program, Parvat Mala, is to be taken upon public-private partnership mode. The impact of the infrastructure is that the Shakti initiative it highlights the importance of quality, high mo quality multi-model transport in achieving overall cost competitiveness. For the rural and social sector in particular, the budget refers to a blended finance as an option. Next slide. One station, one product also has been introduced. With global studies, taking India's average logistics cost at around 14% of GDP as against 8-9% to for advanced economics, this is clearly a uh, factor which needs to be addressed by attracting quality anchor investors across the sector. I'll be handing over to Revati for the next section. Good evening, Nod. Now, I am going to discuss about another important topic in industrial infrastructure development. Firstly, we move on the automotive sector. The finance minister has announced a no battery side policy to electric vehicle adoption. The government also proposed to open up defense research and development to private players for auto component development. Then we see in the impact in automotive sector. First one, battery sorting policy. The finance minister has even announced an influence of electric vehicle in public transport sector. This will benefit the entire EV industry and also create new job opportunities. Second one, electric vehicles in public transport sector. The finance minister has even announced the influence of electric vehicles for the public transport sector. This will reduce the dependency on fossil fuels. Cost of running the vehicle will also see a drop, also creating new growth opportunity as well as the job opportunities in auto sector. Third one, expansion of network of national highways. A major focus will be on the improvement of road condition for optimizing fuel efficiency and productivity. This will improve the road condition, will even reduce the wear and tear of vehicle, which will earn turn, bring down the maintenance cost. Fourth one, create demand for new vehicles in CV space. Another step that will work in favor of auto manufacturers, especially in the commercial vehicle sector, will be making rupees 20,000 crore for infra project that will ultimately lead to demand for new CVs. This will surely help the CV sector at a time when it has suffered losses due to pandemic. Fifth point, MSP payment to boost vehicles demand. The budget 2020-22 also announced a minimum support price payment of Rs. 2.73 lakh crore along with the other aids to farming sector. This will improve the demand for new vehicles in rural market. The extension of concessional income tax regime of 15 percentage for no domestic manufacturing facility set up to 31st March 2024 is welcome move and will help attract new investment in manufacturing of electric vehicles and its component. The incentives announced for startup could also be the booster for electric vehicles. Then move on the next sector, banking and capital market. The government has 
proposed to introduce a digital rupee using blockchain and other technologies issued by the Reserve Bank of India starting 2022-23 for more efficient and cheaper currency management system further to help micro, small and medium enterprise. Then we see the impacts in banking and capital market. First one, digitalization. If I were put one big theme for the budget that cut across the most of the initiatives would say it is digitalization. There are multiple bold, bold steps on this front, including proposals on central bank digital currency, digital banking unit, digital health record, digital and records and agri-tech fund. Second one, boost to infrastructure and investment. The government acknowledged that capital investment hold the key to economic revival and at the current stage, private investment needs support in the form of public investment. Considering this, the outlays for capital expenditure has been stepped up by 35.4 percentage. Third one, IFSC gift to city. The setting up, setting up of International Arbitration Center at the Gift City will help in dispute resolution. These measures are aimed at promoting IFSC as an offshore investment destination. Taxation shortest para in the recent history of budget. In my opinion, part B of the budget, which covers taxation, would be the shortest possible paragraph in the recent budget. But then, only few changes were expected and these were in line with the various representation made to the government. The budget proposals are aimed at boosting credit growth of both the banks and non-banking financial companies with the schemes announced across various sectors including affordable housing, transportation and logistic and electric vehicles. The proposal for 75 digital banking units in the 75 district is small setup but definite push towards the digital banking. Digital rupee is another step towards the government adoption of digital as means of transaction banking. This is all about my presentation. I hand over this section to Hidaya Fatima. Good evening all. Budget 22-22 uh, is futuristic, pragmatic and growth oriented and a momentum for the growth of the industry, which is the backbone of the economy as well as an inevitable sector for the progress and development of nation. And I am here to discuss with a key area of proposal regarding industrial products, mining and consumer products. The major proposal in this area first boost to MSMEs and startups, which includes the emergency credit line guarantee scheme and its extension. It has been proposed to extend the scheme up to March 2023 and cover has been expanded by rupees 500 billion to cover 5000 billion. And the next one is credit guarantee trust for MSME revamped uh, to rupees 2000 billion dollars and will expand employees employment opportunities. Moving on. Various MSME portals to be linked, such as Udyam, Ishram, and CS as in portals for aiming great facilitation and enhance entrepreneurial opportunities. Promote startups to facilitate drone shakti through varied application and for drone as a service. Moving on to cement and steel, proposed to CapEx under various proposed measures is likely to drive demand in cement, steel, and mining sectors. And we can see 35% hike in CapEx, that is, to rupees 7.50 lakh crore lakh and rupees 400 million outlay under PM Awas Yojana and definitely policy support to energy transition uh, likely to trigger capex wave and also uh, the changes in effective custom duty under this sector have been dominant role in providing concession to raw materials used in manufacturing intermediate goods to pr promote make in India also uh, and the Atmanarbar Bharat program uh, which involves 68% uh, capital procurement budget earmarked for domestic industry. Moving on, other measures, it includes a PLI scheme, that is product, uh, Productive Link Incentive. Scheme is launched to create 6 million new jobs and additional production of rupees 3 million in next five years. Green bonds to mobilize resource for green infrastructure. Special economic acts replaced, which will enable status to become uh, states to become partners in development of enterprise and service hub. Also, anti-dumping duty and countervailing duties have been revoked of certain steel products and alloy, uh, which has uh, imported from China and Germany. Moving on, metal and mining increasing in outlay for capex and proposed setting up of uh, four pilot projects for coal gasification and may provide. Uh, the much needed impetus to mining and metal industry and the pilot projects have uh, the impact uh, which will boost transition to carbon neutral economy 
And also, a slew of measures are, has also been announced, such as exemption of CDR, that is custom duty rates, on import, uh, import of steel scrap. Moving on to consumer products, textile sector is one of 14 sectors for which protection linked incentive was announced in 2020. And the last union budget show the rationalization of CDR for input and raw materials used in textile and leather production. Also, proposals have been made to amend the uh, effective CDR on some inputs and some uh, raw material used by this sector and introduce a new sunset clause for exemption on the capital goods used by the industry. Also, uh, exemption proposed for duty free import of specified goods by bona fide exporters of handicraft, apparel, leather, garment, and footwear, etc. Also, uh, continuing to provide momentum to make in India one year, that is, uh, one year for new manufacturing projects an additional window of time for the uh, tax concession. Moving on, the graph depicts uh, the changes in CDR rate on some of relevant consumer products in which we can see increase in CDR on electronic toy parts, earphones, imitation jewelry, whereas a decrease or a slashing import duty for cut and polished diamond bring greater relief to the gem and jewelry sector and facilitate export of uh, jewelry through uh, e-commerce. Moving on, the impact of these uh, proposals. There is no specific tax concession or increase for the consumer products that have been announced. However, overall capex push through PLI and extension of window of time create a positive impact. Also, custom duties have been rationalized on parts of mobile phones, wearables, etc. to facilitate electronic manufacturing. Also, the, uh, to incentivize exports exemption have been provided on items relevant to textile sector. Towards the conclusion, all these are likely to act as a catalyst for uh, improving the condition of lower income consumers, thereby leading to a steady acceleration in the consumption and demand of fast moving uh, consumer goods uh, of these products. Uh, this is all about my presentation. Next, I am hand over uh, the session to Shabana. Thank you all. Good evening to all of you. As you can see on the screen, my topic of discussion is regarding to the analysis of units budget 2223 in respect of oil, gas, power, utilities, and renewables sector. Before that, I had like to give you an overview of the unit budget 2021 regarding this sector. When we go through the highlights, our Honorable Finance Minister assures 100% electrification to be completed by 2023 and states about a national hydrogen mission to be launched for generating hydrogen from green power sources and a gas pipeline project to be set up in Jammu and Kashmir and an LPG scheme that is Pradhan Mandri Ujwala Yojana to be extended to cover on crown more beneficiaries. The unit budget to 22-23 aims a balanced budget which is goal oriented and it gives a strong emphasis on the long term growth as India begins upon its journey for achieving carbon neutral target by 2070, which was stated by the Prime Minister, that is, this budget aims to take steps in reducing carbon emissions and thereby promoting the use of cleaner fuels and energy saving measures. Now, take a look at the key highlights regarding oil and gas sector. While presenting this budget, it is said that 7% of biomass pellets will be co-fired in the thermal plants and added that the transition will reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 38 million tons annually and it will be provide extra incomes to farmers and job opportunities to locals. During the speech, she announced to allocate Rs 90,500 crore to boost manufacturing of solar modules under the government's flagship production like the incentive scheme that is PLI for meeting the goal of 280 gigawatt of installed solar power by 2030. This budget aims to promote energy efficiency and saving measures through energy services company business model in large commercial buildings and also links with the promotion of the use of public transport in urban areas. Says, that is special mobility zones with zero fossil fuel policy contributed by the use of electronic vehicles. The government of India is recognized the increasing demand for electronic vehicles in the country. Therefore, the government decided to provide infrastructure for this. In the light of that, the finance minister announced the intention of government to bring out a battery swapping policy. For 10 sectors such as electronic waste, end-of-life motor vehicles use the oil waste which should be supported by active public policies covering regulations. Moving on, next, let's move to the next sector that is power utilities and renewables. In this budget, laid emphasis on the vision of promoting energy transition and climate action during the Amrit Khan. It seeks to lay the foundation and give a blueprint to steer the economy over Amritkal of the next 25 years from India at 75 to India at 100. 
പാല് കണ്ടാൽ പാല് കൊണ്ടാ തൈരാ Let's discuss about some of the key highlights regarding this sector. In the case of policy, additional allocation for PLI for manufacturing, high efficiency modules will facilitate integrated manufacturing from polysilicon to solar PV modules. Energy storage system will be included in a harmonized list of infrastructure. This will attract foreign investments or borrowings in the sector. Fiscal deficit of 4% of GSDB, that is gross domestic product, to states will be allowed of which 0.5% will be tied to power sector reforms. Decentralized renewable energy generation will be promoted under the VVP program for border villages to northern India. So we can state that this budget step towards our energy transition journey and fight climate change, the, pro the projected 9.2% economic growth is largely given by clean, clean energy in interventions across sectors. The blueprint of Amit Khan strat uh, strategically acknowledged energy transition and climate action as the key pillars. What the oil, gas, power in industry is expecting from this budget this time is that coming in the next sect next year, domestic gas, domestic oil and gas power production is going to remain a key driver for the economy. This is what I need to say about these sectors. It was an honor to present my uh, perspective here today. For presenting the remaining session, I hand it over to Sneha Ganesh. Thank you. Good evening all. To the next day of presentation, I am here to discuss the real estate and technology sectors. Real estate. The recently announced budget might prove to be a crucial turning point for all the real estate industry. It has announced several measures that are likely to have a positive bearing on the sector. However, let's look at the pointers underlined to reduce the concerns of the real estate developers. Real estate provides relief to the affordable houses sector and subsidiary industries such as steel and cooperative societies. And this relief reflects the economic growth with a planned expenditure of Rs. 7.5 lakh crore that could lead to improved cash liquidity in the market, which would directly impact the real estate sector. Housing for all. At this mission, over 80 lakh affordable houses will be constructed and delivered by the year 2023. These houses will be constructed under the flagship housing development scheme, Pradhan Mandri Awas Yojana. Next, toll project. Budget also recommended on allocation of rupees 48,000 crore for these toll projects, which will enable the timely delivery of the under construction projects. Next, land records management. National generic documents registration system. An announcement has been made that all the states will be encouraged to adopt the unique land parcel identification number, which will facilitate seamless and IT based management of land records. And this land records can be translated across all languages. National Generic Documents Registration System also ensured a new scheme, one nation, one registration software, and it's a uniform process of anywhere registration of deeds and documents. Moving on. Next, focus area on real estate in urban development. Budget highlighted the need to develop mega cities and an increased focus on type two cities and type three cities. Type two cities are those cities where population is above one million and type three cities where population is below one million. And these cities are planning to develop economic powerhouses in their near future. Urban planning. It is the announcement of the constitution of a high powered committee for making suggestions on policy matters and capacity building related to urban infrastructure development. Now to the next sector technology. There were a number of critical announcements on promotion of technology stated that India's growth for the current fiscal year is estimated to be around 9.2 percent and its highest among other large economies. Key highlights. Pradhan Mantri Evidya, it's a digital ecosystem that is providing one class, one channel will be extended from 12 to 12,000 channels to provide supplementary education to students from class 1 to 12. Next, digital universities to be set up on a network hub and spoke model where personalized learning will be provided in multiple Indian languages. Next, 75 digital banking units will be established in 75 districts of India by scheduled commercial banks. E-passports. This will be issued using embedded chips and futuristic technology. Animation, visual effects, gaming and comics. It's a task force that will be set up to build capacity and serve the global market. Kizan drones will be provided to farmers for digital assessment of land records. Moving on. 
Digital ebus also to be set up by the ministries as a policy for settlement of 75% each of running bills in 10 days. National Digital Health. The government will launch a telemarket health program to provide 24 into 7 free counseling and care to people. This initiative will include a network of 23 telemental health centers of excellence. Digital repeat blockchain technology enable currency which will lead to cheaper and more efficient digital currency. Electric vehicles. Battery swapping policy will be rolled out and interoperability standards will be formulated where private sectors will be encouraged to develop innovative business models as a service to improve efficiency in the electric vehicle sectors. Solar energy. Additional allocations of rupees 19,500 crores as production linked incentive to go towards manufacturing high efficiency solar modules. And income from the transfer of any virtual digital asset to be taxed at the rate of 30%. To conclude, one of the strongest parts of this budget is the government's renewed commitment to, with its continued investment in strengthening the country's infrastructure. Overall, the budget seems to have given a booster dose to facilitate faster economic growth of the nation. So these are all about the post analysis made on the union budget 2022 to 23 under the area industrial infrastructure development. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you um, for your wide presentation. Hajira, Revdi, Hathiyar, Sabna and Sneha. Uh, you have made a very extensive presentation of a huge number of themes in technology, railway, real estate, renewable energy, uh, infrastructure, so on and so forth. Uh, can you, uh, when you look at these sectors, uh, A, the sector, I assume you will pinpoint that the budget you feel has got maximum emphasis on based on what you have presented. Anybody from those? Uh, the technology because of the 5G and oil and power sectors. There you find uh, it to be the strongest. Yeah, sir, okay, telecom so, yeah, telecommunication because of the 5G, because they're planning to uh, do it everything by uh, 2025. Even rural areas are supposed to have optical fiber networks. So I think that has got more attention in the infrastructure. And Gati Shakti also is very important. 100, um, over 100 now cargo terminals, 400 new trains, and 2,000 uh, kilometer of railway network, etc. It's uh, very important for logistics. Okay. So it also has got high uh, um, in fact, impact on this, okay. from this budget. Okay, thank you. Uh, you made a very extensive presentation. Uh, implication side, it slightly uh, went down because it was more projecting schemes. The power part of it, you made a very extensive kind of good presentation. Thank you so much. Now, one more thing between uh, the group members. Among the group members, there was a slight duplication. Uh, ISSC gift, which uh, group is under under Shamano, so also one uh, product, one railway station, under Shamano. So when you when you have to when you coordinate, you have to see that it need not be duplicated. Okay, in your future presentation. Group or is one of the other. And the salary is also there. But you can say tell that one. Okay. So thank you. Anybody else? Okay, sir. Anybody else? Yeah. Certain, certain man. Okay. Certain program to tell. Somebody was asking something? No, sir, nothing, nothing. Then we'll go on to the next. Next. Uh, thank you, group number six. For